Okay, welcome back to Cooking with Saucy Sean. We are continuing on our adventure of pie day. March the 14th is pie day. So far we've got a bumbleberry pie, a meat pie, a cottage pie, and now we're going to do something that I've never done before. A peanut butter pie. Chocolate peanut butter pie. I had back in, oh, I guess it was in the late summer in August. I was out in uh, Georgia. I was driving up to, where did I drive to? Oh, I can't remember the name of the town now. But uh, on the way there, I saw this sign for Pink Pig Barbecue. Thought, oh, that's cool. On the way back, I stopped in and had some barbecue. It was pretty good. Um, it's up in the mountains. Oh, well, I was driving to Blue Ridge. There we go. And it's up in the Blue Ridge Mountains, up in the Appalachians. And for dessert, I had their peanut butter pie. And it was amazing. And I've wanted to make one ever since. So I've searched through. I've found some recipes. I have um, adapted the recipe. And I'm going to see if we can make a good peanut butter pie today. This is a no-bake pie, pretty much. The crust we're going to bake for about 10 minutes. But the rest of it is no-bake, so let's get on with it. So, we're going to melt uh, a third cup of butter. And uh, to that, we're going to... You can, do, you can melt the butter in your microwave if you want. Just This was easier for me. Once the butter's melted, we're going to add a cup and a half of um, graham cracker crumbs and a quarter cup of sugar. We're going to mix it all together and then we're going to pat it down into uh, a pie pit plate. I'm going to use a big, big one because this is a really rich pie and you want to make sure that you don't, um, don't kill people with it. Now, i got to say, if you're allergic to peanuts, don't have this pie. Not only does it have peanuts, it's got dairy and it's got gluten. So, you know, this, this is one of those pies that's not safe for all people. And that's okay, because once in a while we got to make some, some good food too. I mean, um, all food's good. So we've got the butter melting here. We don't want it to bubble up or anything. We just need to get it melted so it'll mix into the, uh, the graham crackers. Um, basically, actually, you know, I've thought about this. I don't have to bake this crust. The more I think about it, the more I realize I really don't have to bake this crust. i got a couple different recipes. One of them calls for bacon. One of them calls for not baking it. So I said we've got a cup and a half of graham crumbs. Got a quarter cup of sugar. And we mix all that together. And uh, we want to make sure it's good and moist in there. I normally just melt my butter in a microwave, but I have to have this here for the next step. We could do all this over at the stove, but it gets really hard to uh, get all the cameras moved around because we're new to this. And we're not experts at photography and, and filmography. My wife's the, uh, the photography expert. So we're going to pat this in here. We want to get it up the sides a little bit. Yeah, this is a lot like, uh, really, this is a lot like a no-bake cheesecake. Yes, there's a point where you just use your fingers to do things. I think this uh, recipe is designed a little bit more for like a nine, 8 to 9 inch pan. This is more like a 10 inch pan, but there we go. Now we're going to put this in the oven 350 degrees for just about 10 minutes and while we're doing that we're going to make the topping which is the chocolate ganache I think that's how you say it I got the English as a first language problem I'm very good with English sometimes so we're going to go throw this in the oven for 10 minutes and we'll get working on the next step so for our next step we're going to uh, use a double boiler in this case I'm going to use the stainless steel bowl on top of the uh, boiling water. Again, you don't want the bowl touching the water. You want it above it. And you want the water to be at a boil and simmering and this will help keep things from scorching. You can do it in a heavy bottom saucepan if you want. Uh, it's a bit quicker, but this is a bit safer. So we're going to put a cup of uh, whipping cream in here. 
and we're going to let it get warm and then we are going to add two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. I'm using chippets because that's what I have. So we're going to let this, this get warm here. We want to make sure we have something to stir it with when it gets going and uh, just give it a couple minutes. Cream's getting warm so we're going to put in our uh, chocolate chips and we need to stir this and pretty much almost constantly. I want to keep stirring it till it melts, until it's nice and smooth. Mm. I like chocolate. We had to adjust our cameras a bit because, well, this pot and this uh, bowl is bigger than the last one I used, so. But we're going to get this chocolate and this cream all melted together and smooth. It's going to be like a bit of a chocolate sauce that will harden up when it's warm, but we need to do this ahead of time so it cools a bit before we try putting it on the cake. Because if we try putting it on the cake hot, it's just going to melt it. This is the top layer of the cake. Uh, or Sorry, it's not a cake, it's a pie. Well, I'm starting to boil the water too much. I'm turning it down. Oh, there's still some lumpy chocolate in there. Oh, it's starting to darken up nicely. I feel like I'm putting a little bit more chocolate in there, so I'm going to add a square of Baker's Unsweetened Chocolate. We're going to just chocolate this up a little bit more. Two squares, there we go. That'll melt in there in a minute. Got about five more minutes for our crust. So what we're going to do as soon as this is uh, melted, we're just going to put it aside. We're going to leave it on top of the pot so it doesn't cool too fast. And uh, we're going to go on to make the uh, the filling for the uh, for the cheesecake, which is the the important part, right? Like you can't have a cheesecake without having filling in it. I keep saying cheesecake. You know why? It's because this is pretty much a no-bake cheesecake with peanut butter in it. So, that's just a bit of trivia for you from me. There we go. We're pretty much melted, so we'll find a place to put this pot out of the way. I'm going to turn that off. Put this over here and let it cool for the next little while. Okay. So now we're just going to have to rearrange things a bit. We need the mixer next. So we'll be right back at you. Okay, so we've taken our crust out of the oven. It's got to cool before we put anything into it. So we're going to do this in a couple of steps. We're just going to put this up and out of the way to cool. And a few minutes after it's cooled a bit more, we'll put it into the freezer. Next, we're going to whip up a cup and a half of whipping cream. There's a cup, and there is a half. So when you're whipping cream, it takes a bit of time. You need to get, uh, you need to use a whisk type attachment to do it right. And you start slowly, and you go faster and faster until it's whipped. If you whip it too long, it'll become butter. If you don't whip it long enough, it's kind of runny and yucky, and we want this to be a good firm whipping cream. So we're gonna just start this going and uh, we'll let it rip. So the whipping cream is not quite ready yet, but what we're going to do while it's whipping, I'm going to show you, I'm going to pour a little bit of chalk into the bottom of this, then I'm going to throw it in the freezer, okay? So we're going to keep it whipping a bit more while it's doing that because you can't hear me. Put some chocolate in, throw it in the freezer.
up to a nice thick consistency. See it's definitely forming peaks. If we whip it much longer we're gonna have butter, which isn't our goal. That's not a bad thing to make. We won't need the whisk anymore. I'm gonna take the, uh, the whipping cream that we've whipped here and put it into another bowl. If you're using a hand mixer, well, you know what? You can actually uh, just go on to a new bowl, but I'm using a stand mixer. So there we go. So I'm gonna take, I'm not gonna clean this bowl out. We're gonna reuse it with a paddle to make the rest of the filling. Uh, and because it's all going to be mixed together later anyways, it doesn't matter that there's some whipping cream in there. I'm going to take this, put it in the fridge for a minute or two. It could be longer than that because we're going to have to make the rest of the filling. But while we're making it, I'm going to keep this cold. And then we're going to uh, come back and, and make the filling. So see you in a few minutes. Okay, so now we're going to make the rest of the filling. For this, we need 8 ounces of cream cheese. I find cream cheese really interesting. It's measured in ounces, which is the weight, but it's also, in this case, the uh, the weight, the volume. I don't know. It's a confusing way to measure, but it's one block of cream cheese, eight ounces. Half a pound. One cup of cream cheese would be the other way of putting it. We need that. It should be at room temperature, softened. Guess who forgot to take it out of the fridge earlier? Yeah, that was me. We're going to put it in the mixer. We're going to start beating it up. We're going to add in three quarters of a cup of sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla. And we're going to try and get that all combined. Cream cheese is being a bit cranky and sticking on there. Move it off the paddle. There we go. Don't use a whisk for this. The cream cheese will bust the whisk. You want to use a paddle or your regular blade uh, mixer. So we get them mixing up really good. Get it nice and smooth. So the cream cheese and the sugar are, are well combined now, so we're going to add in a cup of peanut butter. I'm using Chunky today because that's what the store had yesterday and that's what we had at home and between the two, the Chunky is going to work. So we're going to put a cup of Chunky peanut butter in here, kind of like so. go bring that back up we're gonna get them mixed really well together scrape down the sides and double check but oh yeah they're good pull that off now I need to go and get my whipping cream my whipped cream and we're gonna mix these together and we're gonna see how they turn out okay so we're gonna take our whipped cream which is grabbed out of the fridge and we're gonna put it in there and then we're gonna fold it in by hand to the uh, cream cheese and peanut butter mix Fold that in really well. Folding means kind of like that. I always end up stirring when I'm folding. It's kind of a weakness. But here we go. I actually wonder what this would be like if it was just the peanut butter and the whipped cream. I mean the peanut butter and the cream cheese. Oh, that would be rich. Not that it's not going to be rich, but just keep folding it until it's all well combined. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I don't think, uh, oh, there's a bit of plain whipped cream in there. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to put that there. I'm going to go grab the crust from the freezer. We're going to put this in it. We're going to throw it all in the freezer for another 15, 20 minutes. And then we're going to put the ganache on top. Let it cool, everything cool and combine, and it's all done. So here we have our chocolate crust. It's going to be fun to cut, let me tell you. We got our cream cheese mixture. I don't know if this is going to be like the peanut butter pie I had at the Pink Pig or not. Only one way we're going to find out. You know what that is? We got to eat it later. But it is pie day, and that means we have lots of pie to eat today. So I'm a bit concerned uh, how this is all going to turn out for uh, for uh, the amount of food we have to eat tonight. Okay. We want to smooth this out uh, as much as we can because we've got to put that chocolate layer on top of it. I'm actually really glad I used the uh, larger pie pan for this because I think it would have been a bit much for a smaller uh, smaller pan. Okay, there we go. Back in the freezer. We're going to put it in there for about, uh, let's call it 20 minutes. And then we will um, bring it out, cover it with chocolate, the best part. Cool it some more, and then the second best part, well, it really is the best part, we're going to eat it. Okay, so we've cooled off this uh, wonderful peanut butter pie, and we're going to add the chocolate ganache to it, which is also cooled. Just going to mix it up a bit more, pour it on. Oh, look at that. can always leave a little bit of extra just to eat <laughs> there we go look at that um, is that enough what do you guys think okay let's put a little bit more on there it's chocolate after all hopefully it doesn't harden too much and we won't be able to cut the pie there we go so now we're gonna let that cool some more put it in the freezer and then uh, it's slice and serve this is Hopefully, an amazing pie. We, we tried a bit of the stuff from the bowl when it was cooling. It was so good. Um, yes. Uh, right now, we're going to put this back in the freezer, let it cool some more, and uh, in a little bit, we will slice them up and share it with you. Thanks again for watching. Bye bye. Well, our pie day extravaganza is about to come to an end. We're going to cut up our chocolate peanut butter pie here. We're going to have this dessert. We just had our meat pies. We tried our bumbleberry pie earlier. Really disappointed in that one with how runny it was. But it happens, right? Not everything turns out perfect. So we're going to try this one now because the bumbleberry was pre-supper dessert. And now we have post-supper dessert. So let's see what we can do here. This one you want to cut into smaller pieces. Uh, it's going to be a rich, rich pie. Uh, definitely, definitely gonna gonna pack the pounds on as you eat this one. Uh, it is recommended to keep this one frozen. But you can kind of treat it like a no-bake cheesecake. That chocolate layer looks perfect. Oh. So, as you've watched these videos, I um, hope you've enjoyed them. Please uh, share them, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel, that will really help us. Um, like them, put thumbs up, all that stuff. And check back. If you subscribe, you can probably get notifications. I really don't know how that works, but... There's a little bell icon. You click on the little bell icon and you get notifications every time a new video goes up. Which we're going to be attempting to do new videos every Monday. So uh, check out, check back on Monday. So our first videos are going up on Sunday the 14th of March. And then every Monday after that, well not... Well, yeah, even the first Monday we'll, we can throw up a video. 
So check back, watch our videos, like them, share them, comment, be nice. I'm trying to bring you food. So let's see how this is. Sarah's not a pie person or a peanut butter person, so if she likes this. Mmm. I do like this. Mmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's two thumbs up. Mmm. Yeah, that's, that'll do. That'll do. Thanks for watching. Uh, come back again. Have a great day. Enjoy Pie Day. And, um, yeah. Just have a great day.